it's really a, a, of epidemic proportions is the best way to describe it. The drug problem has been bad for years and it seems to be getting worse. In Hardin County, Kentucky, the issue of drug abuse is significant. Whether it's alcohol, whether it's marijuana, whether it's methamphetamine, whether it's heroin, whether it's um, prescription drug abuse, um, what, you, if you name it, if it's on the streets in New York City, it's on the streets in Hardin County. We see a whole lot of meth in Hardin County and have for a number of years. Heroin has made a comeback since pill mills were kind of cracked down on in Florida. We've seen an increase in heroin simply because supply and demand has dictated that the price of pills has increased and heroin is now cheaper than pills. So we are seeing a lot of heroin infiltrating this area. It's pretty bad out there. Um, you know, Kentucky leads the nation in overdoses. Kentucky leads the nation in children born addicted to opiates. Uh, you know, across the country, I think we're losing over 100 people a day to overdoses. Uh, most, of those, most of those are the heroin and, and fentanyl overdoses. It's probably about as bad as it's ever been. Not everyone who comes to court that has an underlying drug issue is charged with a drug charge. For example, um, if you have possession of methamphetamine, you're charged with a drug offense, possession of methamphetamine. But you might also be out there in our community stealing from other people, shoplifting from stores to support that very drug habit. So whether it is an actual drug offense or a charge that exists because of an addiction, those are a significant number of individuals, a significant number. I would say more than 50%, probably closer to 75% of the matters that come through this courthouse have an underlying issue with a drug-related issue. It's really hard to put a specific percentage on what percentage of crimes are driven by the drug trade, but I would say it's significant, much higher than 50%. Drug use is is a crime in and of itself. Drug possession, uh, distribution of narcotics and other types of drugs is a crime. But there are a lot of other crimes that are accompany, that accompany drug use. We see a whole lot of thefts, uh, burglaries, other types of violent crime that are related to drug use. Well, our total number of cases has doubled in the last 20 years. And since more than half of those, I believe, are related to drug issues, then I would have to say that they've grown as well. Hardin County is a uh, federally designated high intensity drug trafficking zone. Uh, we are located on the interstate, Interstate 65, and also uh, Western Kentucky Parkway comes through this area. So there's a whole lot of just uh, interstate traffic in this area, which kind of promotes the drug trade. I think there's lots of factors that contribute to the, the drug problem. You know, a lot of, lot of it is related to mental health and undiagnosed mental health issues. People try to self-medicate with street drugs instead of going to, you know, a doctor and getting a proper prescription. I think people are frustrated. Um, you know, the, the job market is not all that great. Uh, it could be something they're trying to cover up from their childhood, an adverse childhood experience, and you know, something lingering way in their past. They can't forget it, but what makes them forget it for a little while might be heroin, might be alcohol, whatever their drug of choice would be. We have painkillers being prescribed for legitimate reasons for patients, and they are an addictive substance. So um, we are seeing an increase in that. Why is our community find themselves in this throes of addiction? Why does it keep happening generation after generation? Why are we in that situation? Um, many times the people who are dealing with drugs, if they're teenagers, many times they're bored. Um, sometimes we're trying to escape something in life. Maybe it may be a harm that was to them or a family that was no longer together and they're trying to, to make adult decisions in a juvenile body and they're trying to escape what's going on in their life for whatever reason. Um, and because they're available, it's an opportunity to use for an escape from reality, because sometimes reality can be really tough. 
it, it's, that's a hard issue to diagnose. Why exactly is there so much drug use in this county? And that's, if you, if you got the answer to that question, then you could go a long way to solving the drug problem. And we're still trying to answer that question. We do see repeat cases. Um, you know, we do try to get um, individuals some assistance um, for their substance abuse or if there's some type of a, a mental disorder or behavioral disorder. Um, but there are many times um, that it's just very difficult for those that have um, a habit and they are addicted to a substance um, that they will repeat and come back into the emergency room. My goal is to try and address those issues early enough that will keep you from creating an addictive behavior that follows you into adulthood that could potentially lead you to criminal behavior. One of the things that we do need to look at, I think, is focusing more on the treatment side uh, of the drug problem. We've tried the enforcement side since the 70s, and frankly, it has been an epic failure. We need to start looking at uh, more approaches that involve drug treatment, I believe, to solving the drug problem. Healthcare providers need to receive education because um, they have to, as a healthcare provider, you receive continuing education in your profession. Um, and so I think there should be some focused education on um, opioid prescription practices to make sure that, that um, their prescribing uh, practices are starting as um, less, um, min or as minimal as possible before they're, they're reaching some of those um, higher addictive drugs. Um, I think that hospitals and healthcare systems should also really look at holistic care and how can we address the patient not only just from the physical but looking at the spiritual, mental, emotional aspects. First of all, a lot of people say we enable the users by giving them clean needles. Uh, I understand where they're coming from but that's not the point of our program. Uh, what you have to remember, the people who are injecting drugs, they're already injecting drugs. So what we're trying to do is make it safer for not only them, but also for all of us walking on, on the streets and in the parks. Because if they throw a needle out, somebody steps on it, they could potentially get infected with hepatitis C or, or HIV. Uh, so over time, needle exchange programs have been proven to reduce the rates of HIV transmission and hepatitis C transmission. And also, people who access the needle exchange programs are five times more likely to get treatment. Uh, so once you get a person in treatment, you know, that's a huge step forward as far as, you know, hopefully they're correcting their past mistakes and behaviors and, and can start a new life from that point. It's, it's a challenge um, from, I think, not only for society, but for healthcare providers when um, patients are coming in that are addicted. Um, and, and they are seen as just coming in and only they're drug seeking. Um, the problem is, is it's a real problem. And so um, I think that we are just, we have to get past that aspect because it's, it's real for them and we have to help treat that because that's what I feel like we're missing sometimes um, is really finding a way to connect those individuals with the treatment that they need. And I think that is a whole nother um, uh, issue that we have, not only within this community, but just nationally. 